Into the darkness No light, no sound No gravity I give myself over to The unfillable cavity Okay, welcome everybody. Hope you liked that Ashcon intro, because it's the only Ashcon you're getting this episode. Filling in, we have... Derek. That's right, Derek Wyatt, who runs the social media for pretty much all of our adventures and uh, does just a ton of stuff behind the scenes for Float Tank Solutions as well. And Ashcon's busy working on the conference, getting everything ready for August. And in the meantime, we have a question for you. And that is, are Google Ads important in marketing a float center? Yes and no. <laughs> Wait, I already said that one time. Um, so, I mean, the idea behind Google Ads is another paid platform. By the way, Google, if you if you don't know what Google is, go Google it. Uh, but they're... <laughs> <laughs> Bazing! <Da -da. laughs> okay, go on. Sorry, I just had to say that. Yes, it. so, I mean, just like we've all talked about Facebook ads, the other largest ad platform out there is Google Ads. And I think... Oh, I was going to say the phone book. But I guess that was, you know, maybe 20 years ago. Yeah, man. Whew, 30 years ago? Book. It's almost <laughs> like radio ads. Okay, go on. I don't know why I'm like, I'm just giddy or something. I had too much coffee. <laughs> too much coffee? There's no such thing. So, going back to Google ads, <laughs> the probably, I don't know. I haven't heard a stat whether Facebook surpassed them yet as far as like the largest ad platform because everybody talks about Facebook ads. But Google ads has been a thing for 20 years plus and it's going to still be a thing. People use Google to find things near them, especially small businesses. Mm -hmm. And so with that said, when you search for something on Google, usually five to ten items show up on the first page. And I say five to ten because if it's a local item, you might have a map that pops up with like three mm -hmm. or four locations that are pinpointed near you. So that takes away from some of the other listings. But moral of the story is if there's probably five or less float centers in your area, you better show up on the home page or you're doing something wrong with your SEO on your website, the search engine optimization. You should at least show up as one of those first five options. Right, and I guess it is one of those interesting things about running uh, a business that's just a little more obscure than, mm -hmm. say, an Italian restaurant. Or massage therapy. Sure, yeah, to make an even more direct comparison. If someone looks up massage in a city, no matter what that city is and you're a massage therapist who's just getting started, you are going to show up 20, 30, 50 or down the listings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or ne never. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whereas if you're looking up float tanks in most cities, there's not a ton of float tank centers. I mean, there's some exceptions, which we'll, we'll probably chat about coming yeah, yeah. up. But, you know, if, if you're one of, again, like Derek said, five float tank centers, do you really need to pay to show up at the top of Google when you're going to be one of the things that shows up on that map, on the Google listings, on Google Places, whenever you search for that and the name of your city? If everything else is optimized and working well, maybe a little bit of money here and there. And with Google, like everything else, you can track its effectiveness. So it could be worth the test if everything else is running well for you. But if you're strapped for cash and just looking for another option, probably not right now. Um, we can always talk about if there's more than five float centers in a town, should you be running Google Ads? Because really what Google Ads do is that search result we just talked about, it just puts the first two to three Results are ads or paid results that show up above everything else, above that map, above the other listings. So basically, most people don't want to dig too far into Google. They want an instant gratification response. Floating in Portland, where to float in Portland, they just, oh, top option right there, or top couple of options I'll consider. So if you want to be guaranteed one of the top couple of options, try Google Ads. Like I would almost say if I had... Let's just say, you know, $1,000, $2,000 that I was looking to invest in Google Ads. I'd probably invest in trying to figure out how to get my Google reviews up instead mm -hmm. for my places page. You know, like figuring out how to get 50 to 100 extra reviews and spending some money on um, campaigns or, you know, just signage in shop to be like, hey, you know, leave us a review afterwards or really just running some experiments on upping that review count feels like such a better investment, you know, because right. that controls, like, the perception. It's just, like, whoever's highest rated, you know, it's like if you have 300 reviews and you're rated 4.7 stars on Google, 
I mean, that that to me is how you win the the listings, not by paying a thousand, two thousand dollars right. for just ad space, which then will go away when you stop paying for ads. Whereas <laughs> exactly. reviews I was about to say that, yeah. stick around. You know, and it's one of those things like investing in again the foundation of your marketing skills, things that will help you regardless if you stop paying it or not, are probably wiser investments. Um, and those are little things that Graham was mentioning that helps your SEO, your search engine optimization. The amount of reviews and the ratings you get helps Google consider whether I show you or the competing business that has two reviews and they were both three stars. Mm-hmm. So Google also go, uses third-party validation and testimonials to say, hey, which one of these is the legit business? I know people can trick Google and, and Black Hat SEO, but these are reviews from the people. Which one should we go ahead and show the user? And especially, as I say reviews, because it's a lot easier on Google to get um, more reviews written than it is on Yelp, for it example, is, at least yeah. for the time being. They just don't screen nearly as many as Yelp does. So, again, doubling down some investment in that I would do over ads. Um, the And it's interesting, so for Float On, I guess, just to say historically, we really have not played too much with Google Ads. If I think we have, I don't think I've been a part of it. No, I think I did when we first opened yeah. up some time ago before you joined. So this is, you know, yeah. we're, we're going back quite a while now. And uh, I think it was only, you know, a few hundred dollars worth of kind of tests. And this is back when it was us. Yeah. And that's it. And we, I really quickly came to the same conclusion, which is why am I advertising for nothing? I mean, essentially what we, we would do is go and advertise for other wellness things. So mm-hmm. if you're looking up massage, you have a chance to find floating as well but it's and then no one knew what floating was then you had to in a short ad convince them that they should click on this thing to explain what the heck floating is and then why they should do it besides a massage anyway it it never worked out or made sense really competing with really competitive keywords at that point on google ads which gets really expensive so like if you were to try to like meditation in portland or like some kind of like buddhist temples in portland because you wanted to try and like pull some audience from that because you've got this meditation device in your building you're probably going to be paying a lot more trying to compete for keywords that aren't directly directly relevant to your website so google also knows like is this keyword relevant to the actual page we're directing people towards and so you can't go too fringe you can't start taking out ads for the word pepsi just because you without bought paying the... yeah without shelling out more cash for it yeah. right just because you're like oh if somebody searches pepsi in portland i want them to find my float center because uh-huh. they might go what's this float thing because it's out of the ordinary you know so that you have to be pretty strategic about it and again if you have some foundational things set and you know, there's enough centers in your town where you could get pushed to fourth or fifth in a search result. Give Google Ads a try. And we do Google Ads for other businesses that mm-hmm. we run, too. We just don't do them for our float centers. So right. it's not that we don't see the value of Google Ads or we just haven't played around with it. Um, float Tank Solutions, uh, right. for example, we, we do a healthy... Uh, how, what's our budget I, I for would Float Tank s- Solutions? I would say we probably spend two to three times more money on Google Ads in for Float Tank Solutions than Facebook Ads. Mm-hmm. Because... When people find out about floating, they want to find out floating near them or how to start one of these things, they're going to pull up an ad for float tank solutions. Yeah. So versus me forcing a Facebook ad again, like the problem you described. Now I have to convince this cold audience what floating is in a small ad and because I forced myself in front of them. People are searching for something, be in the top of that search, pay for a Google ad. Yep. And so for us, that makes sense, again, because that's where you want to hit people as they found out about floating. They're, they're wondering what it would take to start one of these up. And we can target those keywords really well. And otherwise, it is kind of a mishmash. You know, if people are just looking up, like, starting a float tank center, they're going to hit a lot of manufacturer websites because it's not a location-specific uh, type of search. You're going to just pull up, you know, again, we might be the first result on there, or we might be the fifth, or we might be the sixth, just depending on exactly what words they used. So that's why for that one, Google Ads makes sense for us. But Again, despite that being valuable in some circumstances, it just, yeah, I guess unless you really do have like a dozen float centers or an overabundance of float centers in your area, Google Ads kind of don't make sense for me. And um, yeah, so what what do you think about that? If there is this uh, kind of large contingent of float centers in a city, like for instance in Vancouver, BC. So I I did a quick Google search and uh, I couldn't pull up any ads for float, float centers in Vancouver, BC which was out of the ordinary. You think if I search for flotation therapy or floating in Vancouver, BC, I should be shown one of the dozen fl- plus float centers up there. I didn't see anything. And so if I was a float center up there, hurry, run, jump, <laughs> jump on this, put out some Google ads. And when, let's say you're showing up on the second page of Google or not even showing up you know, at all, you'll at least get up there and some traffic 
to at least show, hey, this center is closer to me than the one that actually did show up first. So that so that is actually kind of in in my mind too. But that is the scenario where you think Google Ads are worth it. Is yeah. when is when heavily uh, saturated. Yeah. When just the natural search results aren't in your favor, pay for them to help push you up. And then you know what's a rough you know just a, it can be a big range too. Mm. But what do you think is like a, a healthy amount to be oh, investing boy. in Google Ads for a center? Just ballpark. I remember the numbers right. We talked about last time fifty five hundred. 5,000, 50,000, yeah, yeah. 500 million. Um, call back to an old episode about Facebook ads. <laughs> I would start off slow. I think I'm giving the same answer as last time to at least get your training wheels off, right? Like get a feel for how these things work. Um, there's something out there called AdWords Express. Don't do that. <laughs> AdWords Express basically is a, hey, let Google put some ads up for you. Just say, where's your geographic location? Drop in your URL. We'll take care of the rest. It's like giving Google your credit card and saying, $300, please. And who knows what they're going to do with it. Now they're going to do their best to try and get relevant results for both user sides. Search users want to find things, Mm -hmm. ads that are relevant, and they also don't want to piss you off by showing zero efforts. So they are going to try and do their best, but just taking the next step and open up a full AdWords account will actually give you all the control over age, gender, geographic location, specific keywords tied to specific ads you're trying to run. Everything can be a lot more targeted, which is going to help your targeting budget a lot better. Cool. So, yeah, that makes sense. I, I hate to put a number on it, but $50 is a good one. $100 is a good one. You got to think cost per thousand is probably going to be around the 10 to 15 20 dollar range so to reach even a thousand people might cost you 20 dollars. so if you want to reach two thousand people that search for a related keyword that we're showing your ad it's going to cost you like 40 dollars. so these tests can eat up really quickly um and i say a thousand or two thousand people it sounds like a lot it's it goes by really quick yeah yeah there's so many google searches nowadays just for related things so again when you pick your keyword targeting that's going to help drag your dollar out a little bit more and only get shown to people. Don't be so generic. Don't be like, meditation in Portland. Meditation is a keyword I'm going after because people might be searching meditation all over the place or yoga. Don't don't Google ad, try to pull out traffic <laughs> from yoga. Stick to, especially in those heavily populated dense areas, keywords like sensory deprivation, flotation therapy, float yeah. therapy, spelt a couple of different ways, stuff like that. That would also help. Yeah, with the A, without the A. Yeah. Ongoing, ongoing heated debate in the industry for that Ooh. one. There's there's even there's <laughs> even tricky ones out there that sometimes work, sometimes don't like keyword your competitor's name. Sure. Right? Yep. So if there was XYZ Float Center and you wanted anytime somebody typed in XYZ Float Center, your float center ad popped up. Yeah, that's that's doable. Yeah, yeah, for a while we had uh I think one or two manufacturers that would pop up when we did a search for float tank solutions. Yeah, yeah. Writing on the uh the name still, there. Still does. Nice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um cool, yeah, I was gonna say the same I mean like for starting out, I was gonna say fifty to a hundred dollars for early tests. You know, that's over the course of a couple weeks or a month. And then if you're spending more Ooh, than bonus tip, bonus tip, make sure it's tied into your Google Analytics so you can actually start seeing where these people go on your website. So yeah, they oh, click yeah. through and it's they're both Google, but it's not going to be 100% intuitive. You actually do have to tie the two together. But when you do, you can see, okay, clicked on ad, landed on home page or whatever landing page. It doesn't have to be your home page. And then what did they do after that? The visualization of the path they took, it's going to help you understand where your money's really going. Yeah. And if you're spending over like $300 a month on Google Ads, uh, be sure that you have that tied in. You know what your return on investment is from people actually making purchases. And Absolutely. if that's not where you want it to be or anything, maybe think about scaling it back or, you know, just giving up on on Google Ads altogether at that point, you know, it's or, or just tweaking things until you get the right return that you want. Um, if you want to get really super technical nerdy, which, you know, maybe you don't want to, but if you're going to hire a marketer, make sure they understand how to tie whatever booking software you're using to the e-commerce side of Google Analytics to see, okay, this ad actually did generate me $75. Yep. And if you're you're listening and you're on the helm, uh, it can do that just by easily copying and pasting in a code for both Facebook and Google. So tracking on that at least is Was that called really cross-domain tracking? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, this has ended up being a little bit of a long episode for our Google Ads important for for the basic answer being like no in 99% of cases, but maybe yes. (laughs) Um, If you fall in the yes, play around or hire an expert to 
actually take care of it for you. Yeah, but but again, you know, for the most part, if without knowing where you are, what market you're in, my guess is no, Google Ads are not that important, and and I'd take whatever money you were going to invest in that, and either invest it in some community building or just throw it into Facebook ads if you're looking for for ads to spend it on. Yeah, um, you can even see this in the industry report. If if you look at that, and I've said it many times now on the program, but it always goes word of mouth, then Facebook ads, and then everything else, like a couple notches below that. So. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, for not just us, but the other float centers, Facebook really has been the place to invest your money rather than Google. It's more interruption marketing, whereas Google is actually people have an intent for that topic already. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. And if you have questions of your own, head on over to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.